Oh man, Charleston White, man, we back. Say, what's up with it, my nigga? Yeah. Man, every day I wake up on Twitter and I and I upload, because you know every morning I upload new videos on YouTube and you don't pop up and the fans, they get upset with me. You know, where Charleston White at? Where Charleston White at? <laughs> and I'm always like, nigga, a year ago, y'all y'all was unsubscribing from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been actual a whole year. Yeah, it's been a whole year, man. And, and your growth, like I told you the other day on the phone, is is amazing. Uh, I I I wasn't chasing anything, homie. Uh, I just came with with this character. Uh, so I wasn't chasing money. I wasn't chasing the light. Meaning I wasn't trying to be famous or, or anything. Uh, nigga, I just like being a clown. You know, the class clown. So you know. Uh, yeah, I just like popping my collar, talking shit, uh, and, and, and it transcended in, into a monetary gain. Uh, and so now I'm just having fun with it. So you recently, uh, you got your own clothing line now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, nan, 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 boo, boo, and, and, and text in Texas nigga nation. So yeah, you know, we got the, we got the nan, nan, boo, boo, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's marked on the back. And then on the inside, it got a uh, Texas, Texas nigga nation with, with washing instructions. So it's, it's my brand, it's branded. Uh, I got the hats, uh, I got the nigga nation shirts, man. So you can get you an Ohio nigga, a California nigga, a Hawaii nigga, a Virginia nigga. So all 50 states can get a nigga shirt at, you know, uh, the real Charleston white. Uh, dot com. So yeah, <laughs> and then these never ignorant getting goals accomplished hats, man. So uh, and, and, and I did that to pay homage to Tupac, right? Not Tupac the rapper, but Tupac the person. Uh, uh, uh Tupac the one that had the revolutionary spirit. Uh, from Afeni Shakur. Uh, the two, the Tupac who was who who read all the books, right? That transformed into the rapper. So I paid homage to the person, the individual. So I trademark never ignorant getting goals accomplished. Okay. And for the people who, because you know people in the comments, they like the troll and they're going to say shit about your clothing line. Your, your shit is actually doing numbers too. Yeah, yeah. My, fir my first month that, that it launched uh, in, in, uh, in, in September, man, uh, we did right at, right, right at, at $10,000 in sales. Uh, nice. My number one selling item is this, this, this never ignorant getting goals accomplished hats. Uh, after, after my latest Vlad TV interview, uh, that first day that the video dropped, uh, we did about a quarter, almost 250,000 views. That transcended to 58,000 people going to go look at my website. Nice. Nice, man. And uh, it, 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 like I said, it's, it's, it's a crazy thing to see, because I remember you going on Facebook every morning, but now you're actually a brand. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks to you, uh, Pistol Gordon, uh, uh, one, one, one of one, one of the main people locally, man, who who were able to 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 grab Charleston White, uh, right at the takeoff of this thing, and and sit me down and edit some videos outside of uh, your platform that could put me locally, uh, was Boss Talk one on one, right? So Shout he out was to Boss Talk. Yeah. yeah, he was able to put me in a in a in a seat and 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 get the whole complete backstory. And, and not only did it, it, it help paint a better picture for me, it also helped his platform grow as well. Now, a lot has changed uh, since we last spoke. A lot of shit has went down. Alpo Martinez was murdered in Harlem four days ago. Yeah. Oh. You, you, and, and, you, and, you, and you're known for going, you know, at New York for the, you know, your little things about New York that you don't like. I know you're a Southern guy. You know, when you seen that news, what was one of your first, you know, reactions? Uh, I gave it, I gave it no thought. You notice, you notice, you don't see nowhere of me speaking on it, nowhere on the internet. Uh, I, I don't like falling trending topics. Uh, this, this, this what I know. Uh, he once was responsible for killing 12 people, wasn't he? Like 14. 14. And, and he come home to brag about it. He came home and just done a recent video and talked about how he killed Mitch and how he used a kid who was so small, who could stand up in a van and kill Mitch. What did, what, what was to come of that? He, he, he didn't come home and try to prevent other people from becoming who he had became. So uh, you live by it, you die by it. 
Yeah, he actually went to the location where he dropped off uh, Mitch. You live by it, you die by it. Did that make you look at New York differently? No. Uh, it, 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 uh, it, it, it assures me that there's a God. The, 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 it assures me that uh, that wrong never prevails because it looked like he prevailing. He killed people, homie. Not only fuck the drugs, he killed people, and 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 he talked about it with no remorse. He came home and had no actions of redemptions to redeem what he had done, homie. He still got victims out there. He still got cut. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So, uh. No, man, uh, that, that lets me know, man, uh, wrong never prevails. So it has nothing to do with New York. At the end of the day, my nigga, all this shit is, is about right or wrong, good or evil. When you see before his death, uh, you know, I was I was tapped in on YouTube and I seen WAC 100. You know, they were talking about 6 9 and they were talking about um, Al Paul Martinez. And a lot of people, they kind of were on... They didn't really say any bad things about him because they said he was he stood on yeah he was a rat but he stood on what he was about. Oh uh, well, that's why that's why I say fuck the streets and all that snitching shit because they make exceptions even in our communities they make exceptions to the niggas who can fight and they make exceptions to the niggas who will kill you. It's some it's some it's some real niggas that they think real niggas who snitch, but they become these real niggas because. In our culture, if you kill somebody, you become idolized. You become idolized, right? So how can they make a butt to, to, to Alpo? You see, how can this guy walk a Man, listen, I've never snitched on nobody. You think Alpo got as many threats as, as me? Do you Have no. you seen nobody shame Alpo, homie? Nobody. I ain't, I ain't never done that. I ain't never done none of that, homie. I ain't never killed no black people. I ain't never kids. You see what I'm saying? So, but because we glorify the negative attributes of gangsterism, we don't glorify the part in, in Godfather when they make the guy go home to his wife. Or oh, which one was that? Uh, whichever one make the guy go home to his wife because he was hanging out too much. Uh, was that, uh, you talking about Ace? Whichever one, but okay. you, you see, it, it was rules. We don't glorify the part where, hey, man, say, stop doing this. There's a woman walking down the street. We didn't take those attributes of gangsterism. We took all the negative and we embody all the negative. So Alpo get an exception. Uh, Jim Jones get an exception. T.I. get an exception. Uh, Jay-Z, Snoop Dogg, all these people get exceptions, right? R. Kelly, they get exceptions. Tupac, Mike Ty, everybody get exceptions. But the normal average Doe has to be held to the standards where he have to throw his life away just to prove to the brother next Doe that he just as real as the celebrities they admire and idolize. So this is what we have now. We have a generation of young people who are idol worshipers. They're idol worshipers. And, and they was birth, they was birth from us, right? My generation is the first generation after the civil rights movement who began worshiping idols. We start putting them on our walls, word up posters. We start getting 24 hours, 24 seven rotation of, of entertainers music through, through Yo MTV raps, uh, 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 BT, MTV, Video Soul, VH1. So now it's almost like we know these people and we don't know a shit about these motherfuckers. So when a guy like Alpo comes home, Alpo embodies the lyrics of what the rapper paints. We was already desensitized to accepting Alpo when they gave us the movie Paid in Full. Cameron plays such an excellent part. He make you love Alpo. But then you got some people over on Rich Porter side that watch Alpo come home and think he's still king of Harlem when Rich really was king. So you talking about right and wrong, good and evil, homie, and, and evil has never won.
Wrong has never prevailed. Go ahead. Growing up, did you sell? Because I know you grew up around the crack in, in, yeah. um, in cocaine era. It was yeah. real bad while, while you were growing up. Did you ever sell drugs growing up? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I first sold drugs. A uh, guy, guy out of name of Dower, named Big Paul Chappelle in Pebble Creek Apartments. Big Pebble Paul, Creek. Big Paul real, bad, real bad apartment in yeah, Arlington. Yeah, yeah. Big, Big Paul gave me a, 125 quarters, right? $125 worth of quarters just to start me out. I think I may have sold $50 after school, but I was the kind of kid. I had to be home before the lights came home, so I couldn't sell dope all day. And I couldn't bring the dope in the house because my mama checked things. So I had to leave it outside. Uh, I couldn't sleep at night selling dope in my mama's house, right? So I probably made, off that $125, I probably made $50 selling. And then I tricked, I, it, it, it Paul, and then I tricked the rest uh, with, with, with Mexican Maria. She was a grown woman that used to have sex with the kids for the crack. So yeah, yeah, once I realized the grown women are sleep with us for the crack. I couldn't sell crack, nigga. I wanted to fuck. <laughs> yeah, nigga. So Big Paul used to chase me after school for a long time, nigga. About about that hundred and twenty five dollars. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I tricked off all the money and the fifty dollars. I bought pizza. There used to be a pizza in right there, right across from Hutchinson Junior High, right there. And I bought pizza for all the little girls after school. But yeah, I wasn't no dope seller. Yeah, I like pussy. Did Did, did you ever pay him back? No, no. I think my brother came home. And made it right. And then my mother, my mother's best friend, uh, brother Rodney, him and Big Paul was real tight. And so, yeah, yeah, but that nigga used to chase us. And he used to pay them downward niggas to try to get us. Yeah, uh, Bo and Petey. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, <laughs> yeah, you know, them downward niggas used to be roguish in the motherfucker back then. Did the crack era, did you see it change the community? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, uh, I watched my aunt change. Uh, my aunt got off on crack. My grandmother, my grandmother was more heroin, but I, you know, eventually probably ended up going to crack because I remember, I remember the Dare program, uh, coming. So that's what taught me about crack, the Dare program, right? And so I started seeing my grandmother not looking like grandmother anymore. And I remember we was over my aunt's house one time, and 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 I went into my cousin's room. And, and, and they had the vials with the crack in it. And man, I said, man, that's from the D.A.R.E. program. From the D.A.R.E. program. And so that's, that's, that's when I knew my grandmother was on crack. Uh, my, my mother, my mother, uh, I, I grew up in a sheltered environment, homie. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, ain't, I ain't see dope fiends. I didn't see homeless people. Uh, I didn't see abuse. Uh, uh, Man, I grew up on Sesame Street. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I learned how to be bad through, through, through television, spending the night over my cousin's houses on the weekends. You see what I'm saying? Uh, studying the culture. I'm a kid at home studying culture, uh, kind of like Malibu Most Wanted, right? Right. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like the Malibu Most Wanted, except that I embodied it so much, I could fool people. And it ended up costing me where I had to really wear the suit. So right. one, you, you see what I'm saying? So once the crack era hit, the D.A.R.E. program in school is what introduced me to uh, uh, the crack era. So once I get the awareness, right, drug awareness, once I get the awareness, now I can see where this is taking place. Exactly. Because I grew up in the paid in full era. And, you know, you grew up when Scarface came out, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, when, when when Scarface came out, everybody, you know, around that time wanted to be a drug dealer. Do you yeah. feel like that movie was kind of like that's what turned everybody into wanting to be the next, you know? Yeah. Scarface. Oh, uh, well, it, 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 if you remember Tookie Williams story, that's kind of what said Tookie toward what, what he wanted to be. Right. So Tookie and him was a lot older than me. So when I come when I come when I'm born in the 70s. We got the black exploitation films. Right. Superfly, The Mac, Penitentiary. You see what I'm saying? So then you got an era of the 80s where we got Bill Cosby. We got Fred Sanford. Uh, we got Urkel, the, the dad off Urkel. Then we get Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Then all of a sudden, nigga, Boys in the Hood. Minister Society. Boys in the Hood. But before that, New Jack City. 
So I'm the New Jack City Boys in the Hood era. Right, okay. Born, born in the black exploitation era. So I grow up on the movies like the Mac. My uncle a pimp. I grew up on Super, so all the Superfly niggas, the, the Foxy Brown movies. You, you see what I'm saying? So that's the era, but I'm ultimately, nigga, a hip hop gangster rap baby, homie. That's what bred us. That's the awareness. But before, before gangster rap come, there's no real street awareness. Right. Uh, Curtis Blow and them, they, they dropping jewels, but it ain't hard. NWA come with the real hardcore, brutal street awareness for young people. And that awareness is what made us start noticing what a strawberry was. Strawberry, strawberry, she's the neighborhood hoe. So, nigga, when I get dope, I ain't, I ain't hungry. When, I'm, when I got this dope in my hand, I'm not hungry. I don't need shoes. I don't need shoes. But my little dick hard. My little dick hard. I, don't, I ain't hungry. Nigga shit. So while all them niggas out on the block, I'm back doing with Mexican Maria. Every chance I get. Yeah, we we still, yeah. So me and a few other niggas bumping heads. But nigga, in my mind, I'm a 13-year-old kid having sex with a grown woman. This is a fantasy. Nigga, I'm in love. This is my girlfriend. Yeah, fuck Big Paul. Yeah, nigga. Yeah, fuck yeah, fuck Big Paul, nigga. So that's where my first love for Hispanic women come from, homie. Uh, being a, you see what I'm saying? So, uh, but when I go home, I can't. My mama can't have no inkling that I got some money in my pocket. I can't wear no new shoes home. My mama right. know what she bought. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Where you get that from, boy? Take it back. Uh, yeah. So, uh, 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 yeah. So now, nah, man. So. That's why I speak so adamantly about rap music. Because I'm a kid that didn't play outside. I didn't play football. Nigga, I grew up listening to them goddamn rappers from Too Short. I was men, and they shaped my young and impressionable mind. So I understand when I say something negatively about NBA young boy, say, boy, I be looking over my shoulder. Boy, them young niggas, boy, I get so many threats on, online about that little boy there, man. I'm gonna leave him alone, you hear me? I ain't got nothing else to say about him. Yeah, his fan base is different. Oh, man, they different. Yeah, they'll rob your mama. Yeah, yeah, they'll rob your mama and hang your dog on the, on the back porch and then come back and shoot up your house with seven Draco. So I'm gonna leave them boys alone. <laughs> Have you watched Squid Game yet? Squid Game? No, no. I don't even know what it's about or what the concept is. I don't watch no television except the BML shit, and I quit. I ain't watching that shit no more. And you've been seeing Squid Game on the internet, though, right? No. Uh, you haven't been seeing the memes and the doll and the... the uh, you might think I'm lying, homie. Uh, say, them people that watch me and dislike me and hate me, I'm so lost in the internet with them, I don't know what's going on in the world. Between the comments and say all the motherfuckers saying my name, looking at this, looking at that, I keep pe I, I'm hey homie, I'm trapped in the matrix now. I don't know what's going on in the world. I'm lost. So you haven't seen the Korean movie? It's a Korean movie, and they're wearing pink suits and green suits and. No. Oh man, you need to check it out. I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have a clue what it is. Now the BMF, you you started that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I start. I started that. Yeah, yeah. I started that, and I won't ever watch it again. Because and why is that? Because I love it. You hear me? Every week I was watching it, and, and and I was coming back the next week watching it, and I love the characters, and it's some of the best goddamn acting I have ever seen. The storyline is good, and then this last episode, man, I'm loving Lavar, Lamar, whatever his name is. It, oh man, it gave me on the edge of my seat. Somebody had got in the way. I looked past them and didn't say nothing so I can read the lines on there. Say, and man, it went off. And I gotta wait again. They ain't, I, ain't, I don't want nothing playing on my feelings like this, homie. <laughs> I don't want nothing making me love it so much and it leave me, man, you know how that feels. Did you watch the last episode? Nah, you, man, I haven't, I haven't say, started man, it yet. Listen, man, that last episode, say, man, I quit. It, they got to finish it. I don't. I, they can't keep doing me like this. And then they say I got to wait. It ain't coming on this Sunday. They say I got to wait. 
I'm breaking up with them niggas. Fuck that shit. I quit. They ain't finna keep doing me. That's too much power over my emotions, homie. I be fucked up when it go off, homie. I be wanting more and more. Man, give me some more. Yeah. More. Man, so fuck them. I quit. Now, Big Meech is another, uh, you know, drug lord. Uh, he's from Detroit, moved to Atlanta. Notorious in the rap game. Um, they made a lot of money together. Now we're here. 50 Cent, he has a a, a show. H how did you view BMF and the whole Big Meech, you know, that whole era? Uh, I, I, I used to... Uh, uh, I used to admire it, and 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 I still admire it. Uh, never in our history have we seen a black mafia. Never, never in our history have we seen a, a individual who can uh, coordinate, uh, facilitate, uh, and unite uh, 50, 49, 48 states. Uh, and all them niggas eating. It wasn't about no killing. Them niggas wasn't about no killing. It wasn't about no killing. And 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 if you ever saw the infamous video of of of, of Big Meat speaking, when he say, "Uh, uh, we fuck each other hoes." Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We just don't fuck the ones that we say this is my woman, mm -hmm. but we fuck each other hoes, nigga. Yep. Whichever one that we all get money, big, tall. So, uh. To get the backstory of 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 who Big Meech is and, and how he became uh who he was, uh and, and, and to see his son playing the part, uh I think that's uh real remarkable. Uh, and I think it's extraordinary. Uh uh contrary to popular belief, uh yeah, they should let most niggas out, homie, who sold drugs and didn't kill nobody. What do you think Big Meech did? to unite so many people. Cause you know, black people, as we, everybody was getting money when the paid in full story, but it's always a bad apple. What do you think Big Meech did to, to make it to where everybody eats and everybody's get, just getting money? Uh, you know, from what I hear, uh, because I don't definitely know, uh, but there's a line in, 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 in the beginning of, uh, of this series where uh, he said, uh, he recognized the power of giving rewards, giving treats. Uh, so if, if you reward the people around you and, and you make the people around you feel like they're just as important as other people make you feel, uh, then, uh, homie, they'll be loyal. And then you feeding them. They eating. You know what I'm saying? So, nigga, everybody ate. Uh, your mama eating. Uh, nigga, when everybody can eat, and, and and then there's no you know there's no bigger me and, and no little you, uh you know that's what that's what set the crews apart. When nigga there's no bigger you, uh when we sit at the table it's a round table so you don't know who the boss is. Now you and Adam Twenty Two, uh, mm -hmm. it's it's a great area right now. Yeah 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 yeah. I see he don't went back being a blonde hair white boy. Yeah 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 yeah. He don't want to be a brunette no more. Say listen. Uh, Adam 22 reached out to me back in March or April, whenever the time he had a little Sodi on there. Uh, he reached out to me and, you know, asked that I want to do an interview. And remember, I called you. He yeah. said, hey, Sean, man, who is Adam 22? I didn't have a clue who he was. You said, oh, man, that's a pretty big platform. That, that, that'd be a good look. Uh, so he told me, you know, uh, uh, I found out he was in L.A. So he told me next time I'm in LA, stop by the studio. So uh, when I was in LA, uh, I had told him, and he had told me stop by the studio. I think I something happened where it, it was another form of communication. Uh, but by this time, I was getting into it with the Asian community, right? I'm getting into it with the Asian community, and I'm 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 peeping the stands that the the niggas in California taking t with the Asians toward me. So uh. You know, we some spiritual niggas down here. Yeah, yeah, we some spiritual niggas. And my nigga spirit say, nigga, don't go on that white boy platform. Gang banging niggas and Asian boys got access to it. Not that they would set you up to do anything, but you got a big name. You done got into it with Bosco. You done got into it with Gun. Who somebody might try to make a play and say, hey, who here? And you at a disadvantage. So now, nigga, 
Don't do it. Be smart, fool. Remember, it's two ways they go get you if they get you. Money and pussy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she is. So I said, no. So I declined. Never said nothing about it. So I said something about Crip Mac. And uh, uh, yeah, man, uh, Crip Mac insulted me on, on Adam Jumper's No 22 platform. And he, and, he, and he hurt my feelings. Yeah, yeah, he hurt my feelings because I was pretty fond of the stupid motherfucker. Yeah, and he hurt my feelings. And I took it personal. And so I say, fuck it. I took it out on Adam too. Yeah, yeah. So fuck it. Yeah, I went to picking on the white boy too. Yeah, because I've, I've never seen Adam say anything um, negative about you. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, yeah. Yeah, now, yeah, when I went to fucking with him, it was the nigga. I, I, wasn't, fuck, I wasn't really mad at Adam. Yeah, yeah, no, I wasn't really mad at Adam to uh, to to his nigga sidekick. Yeah, to his nigga sidekick oh, said, um, uh, Compton, uh, yeah, the AD, Compton. AD is the co-host, yeah, yeah. AD. Yeah, 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 the Compton crab nigga, AD. Uh, to that nigga said, uh, he'll set me up. What? Nigga, what? Yeah, 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 that was, that was, uh, it behooved me to hear a nigga say that on a white man's platform. But then I say, hey, that's them California niggas. Yeah, yeah, that's why I don't like them no way. So that's where that come from. But I had no problem with Adam. Adam actually was kind of saying what I was saying. But then uh, Adam took offense to me having a problem with, you know, him having black friends and his black friends treating them equal with the Dr. King shit. Yeah, yeah. In our world, black and white don't treat each other equal. Yeah, we keep a knife in each other back. That's how we know we're friends. You also said that the hip hop community, Vlad TV is our white boy. You yeah, said that, yeah, right? yeah. Vlad TV is our hero. Yeah, yeah. But well, could Vlad TV do him one nigga at a time? Vlad TV ain't like a. See, Adam 22 like his wife. She a porn star. She like multiple dicks at one time. She like a bunch of nigga dicks, according to academics. According to academics, he say Vlad TV, not Vlad, but Adam 22 wife like seven dicks at one time. Well hung black men. They say you can find Adam 22 woman in the BBC section. Big black cock. <laughs> so he like having all them niggas. He like having all them niggas at his table like his wife. And, 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 and he paid for porn star. I saw him on Vlad TV where Adam 22 admitted that he paid for a porn star to come in the house and have sex with him and his woman and him and his woman. So he paid for men to come in his house to fuck. So shit, if I would have known that, I would have been a little bit more kind to the boy. You hear me? Yeah, if I would have known Vlad, Adam 22 would let a nigga fuck his woman and he'll pay you to do it too, ain't no way in the world I would have made him mad at me. I'm sorry, Adam. Yeah, I'm sorry. So when I saw that, so I said, okay, it's a difference between this kind of white boy and Vlad. Vlad don't want you nowhere near him. Vlad, my kind of white boy, he don't want to smell no nigga skin. He don't want no nigga <laughs> bringing their ass up in there with that weed smell on them funky and the motherfucker smelling like a nigga. So Vlad got you on TV, right? And you won't get to touch Vlad. So that's why I like Vlad. And on only that, Vlad give us some money if, if, if you pretty good. And if you a failing, struggling nigga and you was once popping, Vlad will try to help you out and put some money in your pocket, right? He even helped Mob James get his, get his grandbaby when, he, when the baby went to CPS, when the foster care system go take it. So that Adam 22 nigga don't give a nigga shit. Yeah, yeah, don't give a nigga shit. Fuck him, man. <laughs> no. Say, no, so Vlad is the nigga for niggas. Vlad been spending DJs and all kind of shit, man. Vlad is my nigga. You hear me? I'll fight over Vlad. Nigga say something like a nigga fight over the cowboy. Nigga, I'll fight over Vlad. If I hear a nigga say something bad about Vlad, I'll stand up and he got to whoop me behind Vlad. Oh man, so we'll probably never get the Adam Twenty. He'll probably have to come to t come to Texas, come to you. Oh uh, well, at this point, I realized he let niggas fuck his woman. So if I can't fuck his woman, I don't want to be on there. I don't want no money. I hear his woman a porn star, and I hear them porn star hoes can do something with a big black cop that the average woman can't do with it. So if he can't let me get at his bitch, no deal, Adam. He let them other niggas do it. Fuck you talking about? I'm way more special than them niggas. Yeah, hell no. Nah. I don't want to be on there. Me and this woman can't be on there together. And I heard he let people do it. So why he won't let me do it? And he want me on there. And he said he'll meet me at the hotel. I should have knew what he was talking about then. 
Didn't you hear him say, you heard him say, I even meet him at a Motel 6. They fucking Motel 6. All that money they got, you know, they like the porn on the TV. They like the motherfucking Motel 6. They rent that motherfucker to you and you can get them put on that motherfucking channel. And it's scraggly, but it got the porn on there. You know what one I'm talking about? You done been off Sun Valley before, nigga. Hell you talking about. <laughs> <laughs> With the 55 Crip Mac guy, right? What, yeah, he sounds like a Sesame Street character, like the Cookie Monster. Where did it go sour at with y'all two? Well, I, I love the dude. I ain't lying. I've been watching him. I've been secretly watching him. And I ain't want nobody to know I had a secret crush on him. Yeah, I didn't want nobody, cause you know, birds of a feather flock together. So if somebody walk in the room and they hear you listening to him, they'll think something wrong with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you was in the college university and your teacher walked up and say, hey, Charleston, what, what are you listening to? And your teacher saw you listening to that shit, they might make a referral to somebody. Yeah, yeah, something ain't right with this kid. Yeah, so you don't want no child playing that shit at school. So I was fond of the nigga. I can't think, I think he went on Cam Capone News or one of them motherfuckers, and he said, and this was his exact words, he said, Custerson. Yeah, he called me a Custer. Yeah, that hurt my feelings. Yeah, what? <laughs> so then he said that there's a casket five me. What? Yeah, there's a casket five cuz. That nigga said it's a casket five me. So my little old feeling get really hurt. And I'm thinking, well, nigga, it's a casket for all of us. We all got to get in the casket when we lead him up. Why is just one for me? So yeah, yeah. So they, he got Hoover Killer walking around on his head. And he said, it's a casket for me. And I'm saying, man, why would he say such mean things to me like that? Man, I ain't done nothing to him. So yeah, nigga, I've been picking on him. You know, I know I'm more articulate and, 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 and I can speak better than him. And I know, you know, uh, he mentally retarded. Cause anybody that can program their mind to put five in the places of twos and, and shit like that, uh, the human brain can't do that. Yeah, yeah, you, you got to re you got to completely rewire your brain to speak how he's speaking. Yeah, that got to that's what they call mental retarded. And when he went to jail, you called the police on him? Was that him? No, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. No, I okay. put his OG in jail. I put his, his OG. I called the I call, listen, say, listen, his OG, his OG, OG, OG baby snaps, OG baby snaps are the rolling 50 neighborhood, 55 street crips. He the main nigga. I'm talking about he the nigga. I'm talking about he a bad motherfucker, they say. Now, baby snaps is in the California prison system. He ain't got no business knowing what's going on on YouTube. So Crip Mac make a video. And said that he got a call from the big homie down doing time on the yard. OG Baby Snaps. And if OG Baby Snaps making a call, it got to be serious. So I'm saying, what the fuck? How can OG Baby Snaps in prison know what the fuck is going on on YouTube? And he calling and making, telling nigga what I said. He wouldn't have known what the fuck I said to Crip Mac if it wasn't for Baby Snaps. So I get mad in the motherfucker at Baby Snaps. Nigga, I don't know nothing about Baby Snaps. So lo and behold, unbeknownst to me, Baby Snaps cut the lights off in the cell and he make a video with his cell phone in prison. Yeah, yeah, dumb motherfucker. Cut the lights off and start talking to me, a free nigga. Yeah, yeah, I'm a free nigga. It's like a nigga in the South in slavery talking shit to a nigga up north that's free. What nigga, please? You a nigga, I'm a free nigga. Ain't no way in the world you can talk to a free nigga like this. Nigga, and you a slave. So, Baby Snap make a pretty good video. And he say all kind of shit to me, man, because I wanted to be a Hoover. And he called me all kind of shit. So, when I look at the comment section, the first comment I see, they left a comment on Baby Snap video. They say, Baby Snaps, is that you? I know that's you, Baby Snaps. I recognize Baby Snap's voice. I know that's Baby Snaps. So that was my witness to the fact that that's the real Baby Snaps. So when I saw that, I said, boy, look at these dumb motherfuckers. Somebody recognized their voice and told on them. So I'm going to help them out some more. So I called the Oak California Department of Correction and said, hey, it's an inmate in there. And I lied. I said, he calling and he threatening me. And I'm scared for my life. Yeah, I told a lie. 
But he got a cell phone, so it don't matter that I lied. They caught him with the phone. Yeah, they caught OG baby snaps with the phone, and now his ass is in the hole where he belong. Now nigga in prison, got no business with a goddamn cell phone, bothering no free nigga. If you got a cell phone in prison, chances are you had to get it in your ass. So for one, it was hard to get it in there. Number two, nigga, you probably be trying to make money with that phone. Yeah, nigga, you ain't called a fuck with a YouTube sensation. And you making video, putting it on YouTube, and you in prison? No, nigga, you probably be called and talking to your mama, talking to your kids, taking care of transactions, talking to a bitch, and watching Pornhub. Nigga, not calling fucking with the hottest nigga in the country that tell you he'll call the police. So is is, is that ratting by you calling the? You, you say is that what? Is that is that snitching? Oh, uh, nigga, if it is, I hope it is. I want to snitch. I want to snitch. I want to tell. I, whatever they call telling snitching, I want to do it. And I want to make it cool to do it. Yeah, yeah, nigga, they do it. They they listen. How you think the FBI caught them niggas that killed dirt? Oh, yeah, we're going to get to that. But, yeah, but so look, no, though, no. But, but earlier in the interview, you called Al, uh, Al Paul Martinez a rat, though. I didn't so say what, I didn't call I didn't call him out for rat. I called him out for killing. I called him out for killing 12 people, not tattletelling. It's my honest belief. I recommend snitching. I don't recommend doing 20 years for nobody. I don't recommend doing a life sentence for nobody. It's just like robbing, right? Robbing is a part of the game. It's drug dealers who don't like niggas who rob. But robbery is a part of the game, nigga. So is snitching. If I can get out of jail to tell, why not? I ain't, it's, it's no honor amongst thieves. So why do I have to be honorable amongst thieves? Why? We all criminals and crooks. Why do I have to be honorable amongst y'all? Man, no, I don't, I don't want to. Everybody play by them rules, lose. But look, let me, let, me, let me keep it real. On the internet, you always say that, where's the paperwork? I'm not a rat. I'm not a snitch. I ain't, where's the, but, I ain't but you, but, but by you calling the police on 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 fit on on the on the that's sp- not the... that's not snitching. I'm not breaking the law. I'm not trying to get out of no trouble. That's what a snitch do. A snitch is telling to wiggle out of something. I'm just telling. <laughs> no rewards. No nothing. I just want to put a nigga ass in jail, nigga. <laughs> Listen, it was it was four young niggas. Listen, it was four young niggas visiting a high school girl on my street just three other days. They was out there minding their business, but they had a Cadillac. They had a Cadillac, and they were drinking burro. Just the fact that it was four niggas with a Cadillac, and they was out there past 10. I secretly called the police on them niggas. One of them niggas went to jail. So it was four guys chilling with one girl on your block? Minding their business. I knew they was up to no good. Yeah, I knew they was up. They ain't got no business in my neighborhood. Four niggas ain't got no business in the Cadillac in my neighborhood. Wait, 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 wait. They were minding their business. They were they, minding it on my street, though. They, but they weren't being loud, though. They was out there too late in the Cadillac, nigga. When they leave here, they going to do something. They going to steal something out of somebody's yard. <laughs> so to prevent that, I dialed 911 to get their ass up out of here. One of them went to jail. Nigga, fuck them niggas. They probably was from the get. They probably was. They probably had. Yeah, man. They probably was gang members. But then in my neighborhood in the Cadillac, I ain't seen four niggas in the Cadillac never in my neighborhood. So it, it alarms me. Man, hey, what, they may see this interview and be like, "Wait, that's they better who- not come back." Yeah, they better not come back <laughs> fucking with me. Me and my marine neighbor, man, he he high five me. My marine neighbor won't do yeah. He come, yeah, he high five me. Old nigga. You hear me? He's 68 years old. He's an old nigga. He high five me. Yeah, we 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 like George Zimmerman on the block. Yeah, we patrol the neighborhood like George Zimmerman did. But come on, th- those are your own people though. Them ain't not... my people, nigga, just cause they black. Yeah, them ain't my people. Yeah, I know my kind. I wouldn't have done, done my kind like that. My kind would have showed up by itself in that Cadillac. Not with no three other niggas. My kind. He would have been fucking with the bitch by itself. Not with no three sidekicks like Adam 22. 
It's, yeah, hell no. So hell yeah, anytime I see more than one nigga, my antennas go up. They'll be all right. He listen. He went for tickets. He had tickets, so at least he got his tickets cleared. You went viral before on the Say Cheese platform for lifting up Pooh and um. After that, I mean, you put him on a pedal stool. You spoke about how how he was street smart, where he was from Memphis. I know you fuck with Memphis real heavy. And then after that, it all crumbled. Yeah. He's facing 20 years. Yeah. Uh, he played, um, I think he's doing a plea deal with his felony charge. Um, it's, it's not looking good for him. How do you, what do you have to say? Because just eight months ago, you put him on a pedal stool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I call and, and I call his fans the Pooh Shiesty Babies. Uh, well, we watch Pooh Shiesty go. We watch Frito Bang go. We watch uh, NBA Young Boy go. Uh, we watch a whole lot of them go, homie. Go yeah, yo. Uh, man, we done seen a whole lot of them go. But when Pooh Shiesty went, I said, well. They got an example. They can make one out of it now. See, I recommend at this point, Pooh Shiesty, NBA young boy, all of them need to go do about five to eight years somewhere in a prison system, in a penal system. And then, boy, when they come back, they go be some of the best goddamn citizens we can have in the rap game. They go be like uh, Malcolm after prison. Yeah, yeah. So, uh. These niggas is too violent. Yeah, they too motherfucking violent, homie. Uh, so uh, I recommend prison at this point. Yeah, yeah, I recommend prison uh, at this point. Now, NBA young boy just got out. He's I'm in, mad he's in the motherfucker about that. You say you're mad? I'm mad in the motherfucker about that. And, and, and why is that? Uh, he wasn't in there long enough. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't in there long enough. He ain't purged himself. Yeah, yeah, see? I listen to these little boy lyrics and I listen to how mercilessly they talk about killing other people and what they'll do to shoot up other people's houses. So if you can say this in the lyrics, you should be able to go do the kind of time that come with what you say. So here it is, you in jail, you barely in jail a year, and nigga, you screaming and hollering like a motherfucker, even your fan. Your fans ain't never thought about writing a petition to get nobody out of jail, not even their daddy or their mama. They got some, they, some of their mamas and daddies done been to jail, their brothers, their friends. His fans ain't never thought about writing a petition to a president, let alone writing one for Larry Hoover. But just because NBA young boy been in there for nine, 10, 11 months and he can't take it, shit. Nah, homie, stand on that shit, nigga. Everybody else had to. Over 100,000, um, 120,000 of his fans wrote a petition to Biden. Listen, all of them need to, uh, all of them need to go to join church Sunday. All of them need to, he, he needs to no longer talk gangster no more because he can't do the time. He's selling this shit. Shooting them guitars. He's selling this shit, but he can't do the time. I remember three months in, he wrote a letter that they put on social media and he was one of them Dear John letters. Oh, I feel alone in here. Oh, don't leave me. He wrote that letter to that girl. Please don't. I feel like I'm going to be by myself. Yeah, nigga. Yeah. Be tough. Be tough, nigga. When the judge, listen, all you niggas shooting them guns and talking that gangster shit, don't, don't get on social media when you go to jail. Stay off that shit. It's jail activities you need to be participating in. Not what we got going on out here. It's jail activities you need to be doing, nigga. Fuck you talking about quit bothering us in the free world. Jumping on these social media sites, talking about who done left you. You know this come with the game. You know this what come with it, right? So not only that, all those 100,000 people wrote to the president and let him out. Let him out for what? Let him out for what? To rap? To come do what? So I suggest uh, he ain't about what he rapping about. And if you niggas don't go to trial like Pooh Shiesty, the kind of lyrics he got, he's supposed to be standing up grabbing his dick to the judge. Ain't no plea bargain. 
Yeah, whatever y'all give me, Yana. Yeah, fuck it. You know, you know, sit back. It was a nigga on, on good times one time. He had shot JJ. And James went to court. And the nigga in good time, he was slopped down in a chair like this. here talking, yeah, Yana. Yeah, man. That's how them niggas supposed to act in court. Like they don't give a damn. Don't get in front of the judge and all of a sudden, men show me mercy when you don't show us mercy in your lyrics or in your actions amongst us as a people. I think young boy fans don't really like you because you really never had nothing good to say about young boy. Uh, like at, at once upon a time, you looked it up, Poo Shiesty, but it's kind of like you people looked at it like as if you were attacking young boy personally from the get go. Well, I was. He he, a, man, he a dirty dick young nigga with them herpes. He got that bumpy dick. He got that bumpy dick, and he's steady making babies with that bumpy dick. So what's happening with that bumpy dick? He having a whole bunch of C-section babies. Yeah, he impregnating them girl and them girl and them babies can't have a natural birth. They can't come down the canal because he done contaminated the pussy with that bumpy dick. Yeah, 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 man. So nigga, I can't favor no nigga, you know, and everybody know he got the bumpy dick. And he reckless with it. Shaq, Shaq recently said, um, well, he told his kids, he said, y'all aren't rich. No, he said, we aren't rich. I'm rich. He told his kids, um, go get a college degree. And if you start a company, come present it to me. And if I like it, I'll, you know, I'll invest in the company. But we aren't rich. And I'm not giving y'all anything. You got damn right. Y'all will inherit it when I'm dead. But I ain't giving y'all the goddamn thing. You'll inherit it when I'm dead, motherfucker. And it's going to be divided equally. But giving the motherfucker something. Everybody been giving something, homie. Fuck up in life. Every motherfucking rich kid fuck up in life. They don't appreciate nothing. They're not empathetic. They don't have, no, nah, nah, man. So you make a motherfucker earn something. Even that nigga laying next to you is supposed to have a business idea that he promoting to somebody. Baby, this, this, I got this business idea, baby. You, yeah, square business. My son done wrecked three cars. So I'm like Shaq, nigga, we ain't got shit. Nigga, when we pull up at the drive-thru, we just got separate orders now. Yeah, yeah, me and my son pull up at the drive-thru. We got separate order. Yeah, y'all, I did it on live yesterday. Nigga, he got one thing, and, and, and my shit cost a dollar and something. But I made sure it was separate order. No, you pay for yours, I pay for mine, nigga. Then when he paid for the food, when I paid for mine, he said, well, Dad, I would have paid for yours. You didn't say that in the beginning, nigga. Yeah, so you, you didn't so say that. So you agree with Shaq? Like a motherfucker. My mama did me like that, nigga. That's what woke me up. Mama kicked me out at 22. She took me to off of East Chase and I-30 to Random Mill Crossing Apartment. She helped me get my first apartment. She gave me $1,000. I got a 550 square foot one bedroom apartment. I was working at Carter and Burgess as a mailroom clerk. Making eight fifty an hour. This was in 1999-2000. Making eight fifty an hour as a mailroom clerk for an architect and engineering firm. Mama got me in that first apartment, and nigga, shit, I had to learn how to do it on my own. In the process of having that first apartment, nigga tricking off his money, gambling, shooting dice at the Friday night dice game, nigga going to peeping tongue, fucking off the money. Uh, niggas, you know, eating out. So when it's time to pay rent, my rent was like five seventy five. I had a GMC 1500 truck. I was paying nine fifty for that included the insurance. So uh, each month I'm short on something. I'm either going to be short on rent or I'm going to be short on the truck note because I don't know how to manage my money. So once I stop being able to go to mama and get the money, mama is the safety net. Long as I got a safety net above me, uh, below me, I'm going to be up there acting crazy on the high wire because I know I'm going to fall on the safety net. Once mama took that safety net, nigga, I started becoming a little bit more responsible. No, son, I ain't got it. Then mama started saying, when you go pay me back my money? And then she started making me write a, 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 write a written agreement. When, so mama started teaching me how to be responsible, homie. So that's the only way your kids go be responsible if you train them and teach them. Uh, are you hip to Brittany Renner? Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, Fuji, Fuji, yo, Remember, she got mad at me, you know, with the with the, no, with no, the Trey that, Song no, that, situation. No, that's that's Brittany Rucci. Oh, well, no, nah, I don't know who the Renner chick. You say who, Brittany Renner? 
Brit Brittany Renner. She's the uh, thirty year old chick that uh she goes oh, to scout. Yeah, yeah, that's the bitch run off with the money on the nigga. She my hero. With PJ Washington. Yeah, yeah, I love her. But she 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 recently went to Jackson uh Jackson State uh the school where Deion Sanders coaches at yeah, and she said that she was scouting. So I don't know if she's scouting for a new guy with money. She just like I'm scouting, and and every time she does it, the internet is in an uproar because she's 30 years old searching for a 18 year old to 23 year old kid. Oh, uh, the the old niggas do it. You the nigga, you don't think the nigga, why you think, why you think, why you when the rappers, when the rappers have a tour through the college area, you think they ain't scavenging for the 18, 20 some year old kids? Nigga, I done been at a two short concert, nigga. I done seen who them nigga reached for at that front row. Who you think at the front row of the rap concert, <laughs> nigga? 18 to 25. That fresh young cock. So she ain't doing nothing different. Rather than her looking for, rather than her looking for, it ain't no different than an old nigga, a senior in college, praying on the freshman that's coming into college. It ain't no different than a senior in high school, praying on the ninth grade freshman that's coming in. It ain't no difference. Man, if you working on your PhD and your master's, you might be 28, 30. But let's, okay, I understand where you're coming from, but let's say... Let's say you, Charleston White, you go to PV, Gram PV or Grambling and you put up a selfie and you like, I'm at Grambling scouting. They're going to tear you to pieces. I wouldn't give a damn. I'm going to say, nigga, this is young legal pussy. Nigga, everything out here legal. I wouldn't give a damn what a motherfucker say. Nigga, 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. Nigga, that's legal pussy. Nigga, who wouldn't want a fresh little old young motherfucker fresh off the chopping block? Nigga, didn't they take LeBron James fresh out of high school and draft him to the pro? Fuck you talking about then, nigga. Hell, you ain't nothing wrong with a nigga getting... I wouldn't give a damn if an 81-year-old nigga got him an 18-year-old bitch. Nigga, she grown. Nigga, let me raise her and groom her and do with my little bitch what I want to do with my little bitch, nigga. So let me just tell y'all about Brenna Renner. Say, ain't nothing wrong with a woman that know how to pick suckers. I hope she find another NBA nigga and have her baby and take his money. Ain't nothing wrong with a woman that can find her a sucker. It's a sucker born every day. Because <laughs> it's like... Why not get somebody around your Fuck age? Fuck that. It's, it's too like hard to deal with another 30 year old. You want a young, dumb motherfucker that you can raise, tell what to do, put that good pussy on him, and he tell his mama, fuck her. Fuck you, mama. Yeah, good pussy make niggas run from everybody and run to the woman. You see how she got that boy with the baby, don't you? He's sitting yeah. around with his lips stuck out and she ain't done nothing wrong. I hope my daughter can do some shit like that. I ain't bullshitting. And uh, Brittany Renner is, I think she's th she's 29, which you're 43, right? Who I'm 44. Would you would if Brittany Renner was the DMU? Uh... We fucking like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm gonna be I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing what she doing. Yeah, I'm gonna show up with with condoms with holes poked in them. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna show. Yeah, she go. She playing dirty. I'm playing dirty. He said you hey, and, and Brittany Renner, she's not bad looking. Man, yeah, nigga, she's I know she's a hoe. Else. Nigga, who, who don't want a hoe? Who don't want a hoe? They just don't know what to do with a hoe. I know what to do with a hoe like that there. Me and her uh, work clean together. Yeah, I got a few niggas I sick her on. She just going about it. See, she ain't got no coaching, and she ain't got the right instructions. See, right now, she just renegade and freelancing. But boy, if she put some structure to what she doing, niggas, she can she she can get Donald Sterling. We got to play for the big bucks, baby. Yeah, bypass these basketball playing nigga. I'm like Hulk Hogan. If you go get your nigga, yeah, 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 fuck them basketball playing nigga, yeah. Hey, Brittany Renner, if you're if you're listening, I'm sure this is probably gonna go viral. Hey, uh, get in contact with Charleston. White. Yeah, say say call me. Say I'm telling you, we say play play past them college boys. This is a motherfucker like Donald Sterling. You just yeah 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 just don't yeah. That's what we want. Where he at anyway? Having to Donald Sterling, we still mad at him. You also said, um, you also said uh, these niggas don't be having no land. And shoes mean nothing in 2050. Yeah, in 2050, nigga, Michael Jordan tennis shoes won't mean nothing. 
This motherfucker might kill you when you show up and you toting uh, 300 pair of tennis shoes and they need beans and rice. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, nigga. Uh, think about all the niggas who live in the inner city, homie. They have, they are completely stripped of means of feeding themselves. They can't fish and they don't know how to grow food. We, if you look in, in the grocery stores, nigga, we starting to have a food shortage, look like. And then most of the shipping containers that are being shipped to America are just sitting on the docks. They're not being unloaded. So a lot of things are backed up. Ketchup packages, salt packages, diapers, baby milk. Man, we running out of shit. So the average inner city nigga who wake up every day and put on tennis shoes, he don't know how to take a, a cup and put a seed in there with dirt. Put, put it in the window and grow some food. So he's completely dependent. He don't know how to feed himself. So if he can't get a job and he can't grocery shop, he got to go ask somebody, can he eat? Can you feed me? So that's, that, you know, that's one of them subliminal posts. Hey, nigga, we really bullshitting. We the only ones right now, nigga, caught up in entertainment. I can imagine what our ancestors is, is saying looking down on us. Boy, look at them down there. Boy, them motherfuckers having fun. Ooh, they having a whole bunch of fun. They don't care about nothing. Oh, they ain't got a struggle, boy. We struggle, boy. Look at them. Oh, they having fun. I wish we could have had that much fun. That's what I asked them to say, because we ain't doing nothing having fun down there, nigga. We ain't building shit, nigga. We partying, having fun, shooting one another, drinking, getting high, fucking, come here, bitch. Boom, boom, fucking like a motherfucker. And everybody else laughing at us while they building ships or storing up their tanks. Or stocking up the ammunition and we making noise, having fun like a motherfucker. You also said that Drake um, was promoting homo and we don't get mad at him. So you go go there, huh? But we get mad at Lil Nas X. So we you you go you go go there. You go get me on here and do me like that. Yeah, hey, I, 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 I'm just Yeah, hey, 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 I told you do your homework. Yeah, 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 I said it, man. Uh uh. Girls kissing girls. Girls kissing girls. And, and Drake promotes a lesbian on, you know, girl on girl sex a lot in his in his lyrics, right? But I think I think that's more rap culture too. You know, girls having threesomes with girls and girls liking girls. That's always been uh, a thing. So is boy I, I on boy. I wouldn't pin that on Drake though. Boy, boy listen, on boy, boy on boy is rap culture. You didn't know? No. Yeah, it is. I don't think that's Prison. Rap. Prison. You hold on, prison. You pr going to jail in prison is part of rap culture, right? Yeah. Boy on boy. Boy on boy, it's accepted in now. But we haven't. We don't have a. Uh, we haven't had a street rapper to come out and and say he was gay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, we don't need one to come out and say they was gay. We didn't have some of them caught with transsexuals. A young buck. Them. A lot of them. Young buck. Uh, uh, they Bobby had a video Valentino. with, with, they had a video with, uh, Scrappy and some more people in, a, in an apartment full of transsexuals. Yeah. Uh, they go to parties with transsexuals. Uh, uh, who else? Uh, 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 Mace done been caught with one. Eddie Murphy done been caught with one. Uh, uh, and then not only that, Danny Boy, the boy from Death Row. Okay. Hanging with Tupac. He even said they knew he was kind of gay, homie. And he was over there. You man, you think didn't man? Come on, homie. The boy on boy is secretly accepted, cause we know when these niggas come out being bodyguards. We know when these niggas come home from being in prison 19, 20 years, and they end up being bodyguards. Come on, homie. So, I remember when I was a kid, homie, when when we first started seeing transsexuals like on Mari Povich. And they say, can you pick which one is a man? And you be sitting up there looking, that's a man right there. And it don't be a man. And I the one that. you don't pick be, you remember that shit? Yeah. <laughs> man, that used to fuck me up as a kid. I used to think something wrong with me because I couldn't pick the man. But I ain't never been uncomfortable around them people. So to have Lil Nas X come out, to have, and he ain't no gangster rapper. He never portrayed to be a gangster rapper. He came out singing Old Town Country Road over there with them white honky-tonk boys. So he come out and make a video, right? Hey, I'm gay, y'all. Hey, y'all, I'm gay. 
Tyler Creator said he was gay, didn't he? Yeah. Tyler Creator said he was gay. We done heard rumors. We done heard rumors and rumors about so many different other rappers and ball players being gay. We done had transsexuals come out and show proof. Hey, Dwight Howard like men. Yeah. Long niggas. You see, we done had our folk with evidence. We ignore that. We ignore that. Lil Wayne and baby kissing. We ignore that. Turk coming out saying, man, we, we ignore that. But this one guy, homie, this one guy brave enough to come out and say, hey, man, I, I, I'm gay in the motherfucker. And I hadn't really been singing y'all music. Y'all hadn't really been supporting me. The white country art fans really made me, y'all. You see what I'm saying? The white, so he make one video sliding down to the pole with the devil. Ain't no different than Megan the Stallion and Cardi B now with the shit they saying. Wear the ass pussy. And they on there and they, and they bumping them pussies together when they performing. And you see what I'm saying? They rubbing them asses together. And the, and the girls on stages, they, they freaking each other. Ain't no difference. So then he make a video. I'm finna tell you what touched everybody's nerve. The boy made a video with prison jumpsuits on, sending a subliminal message to everybody that everybody in prison is homosexual. You know why? The truth hurts. That's when he got the backlash from the black community and all the men say, let's counsel this nigga. He touched the nerve in them boys. He touched the nerve in them boys. And all the gay men know everybody who talking out against gay people is the one secretly back doing, catching them in the back alleys. Say y'all sucking dick in the park, nigga. How you know, nigga? Yeah, how you know where they play at? So I was happy to see the baby get counseled. I was happy in the motherfucker. Okay, yeah, the baby and Dave Chappelle. Well. This what I say. Go stand on the corner and say what you want to say, nigga. But you ain't finna stand on these people's platform and say it. I learned my lesson. You see me, y'all ain't fucking with them Asian people no more. <laughs> Shit, I'll say, man, they put them lashes across my head. Shit, you see, I quit fucking with them people. How you think in the gays running the world now? The gays run the penitentiary. So... How in the fuck you think you go bash these people and get on their platform and they ain't go counsel you? So when they counseled that nigga and he went to hide about, oh, I'm sorry. I want to meet with 12 AIDS organizations. I said, oh, they broke him. He can go back to performing now. Look at Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon insulted them Jewish people. Boy, they got him on primetime TV on Fox 4. Man, he, man, he back popping. But they, they, they put them lashes across his ass. They made him denounce Farrakhan. They made him come out and say, hey, I learned about the real Jews. I was fucking with y'all. Niggas ain't the real Jews. He backtracked all that shit. <laughs> and look at him now. His face just as clear as it can be. His, yeah, yeah, boy, he look healthy. He, he, yeah, man, wild and out doing good. Prime time numbers doing good. They go teach your ass. Boy, you go dance to they tune. They call it buck breaking. So, yeah, yeah, any nigga think he can't be buck broke. You might as well just stay in front of the stove talking to them niggas because you ain't getting on none of these platforms, nigga, and you ain't, you ain't go break. Now, I want to touch back on something uh, before we wrap up this interview because uh, you spoke on Tupac earlier. And um, it's funny because I just made a post about Tupac on Halloween because in 93, I think, Tupac shot two police in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Two off-duty cops, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were, I think he, well, he got off the case because they were drunk or whatever. Um, but you see a lot of new rappers try to duplicate what Tupac did, you know, getting the, the, the stomach tattoos and recreating the bandana videos. Do you feel like Tupac, he was a real prophet? Like, it's only, it, it would never be another. Yep. Uh, tu Tupac. Tupac played himself, homie. We saw him go from East Coast to West Coast. We saw him go from backup dancer to uh, you think we, you think y'all the mob, we the motherfucking mob. So uh we watched him man, as smart as he was, homie. Uh he was a follower. 
we was following a follower who was called to lead. You, you see what I'm saying? We we was following a follower who was called to lead. So when you look at all all, all these new rappers today, homie, uh, you you can emulate the character all day long, but nigga, they ain't got the spirit of Tupac. Listen to their lyrics. Just because they have the influence, they don't have the spirit of it. Nigga, they 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 don't they lyrics. They lyrics lead all of them to destruction. Some of Tupac lyrics led us to college. Yeah, yeah, nah, they don't, they, they, they don't have Tupac spirit, uh, let alone do they have the 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 mental the, the mental capacity to to decipher the knowledge and give us that he gave us through songs, right? So uh uh today's rappers are, are, are more or less uh they're 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 giving us more angry, violent lyrics than than a, than an educational tone uh, to the to the anger, right? So uh, this is the generation of, of rappers that Tupac was warning about. Uh, if, if if to the niggas get a piece, uh, to the poor kids get this, you know. So this is the generation that if you go back and listen to Tupac's lyrics. He was warned us that that these these young kids were coming, that we was gonna have a race of babies who make the babies that hate the ladies. You, you, you see, you, you see what I'm saying? Uh, so, uh, man, if you just go listen to some of the songs he said, man. So uh, here we are. And uh, you know, I, I did an interview with Rainwater, and um, he confirmed that uh, you really do be in the strip club solo dolo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I made a mistake of going by myself one time with no gun. Uh, her this was recently. recently? Yeah, her recently. And 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 this big old bad nigga caught me by myself with no gun. Yeah, I took off running. Nah, I'm just playing. Uh nigga caught me sitting in the seat and he could have got me. Uh yeah, nigga caught me sitting down and he could have got me. And uh, but he let me come out the car. So it let me know the nigga really ain't mad. So we come to our feet and all the nigga saying is, nigga, what I tell you by speaking on this situation. And let me just say this, the nigga was right, I was wrong. Uh, and I ain't had no business fucking with him, but I still be fucking with him, you know what I'm saying? And he a killer. Yeah, yeah, and he, and, and he a killer. Uh, but now, nah, man, uh, uh, slippers count. So, you know, nigga caught me slipping and did nothing happen. And he in what situation? Uh, Leaving out the strip club. I was walking out the strip club. He came in the strip club, and my partner said, "Say so and so just walked in." I said, "Yeah, I see him." Uh, I normally don't drink, but I was tipsy. The club closed. I went to the bathroom by myself. He could have easily went in that bathroom, and you know. Uh, but I keep a knife on me. I keep a box cutter, you know, box cut on me, no matter where I go. So I keep a, you know, I keep a box cut on me. Uh, so, you know, uh, it wasn't going to be easy, but it probably would have been easy because he caught me, you know, he caught me slipping. Uh, but now, nah, man, the nigga just saying, man, just let me make it, homie. Yeah, just, you know, just, you ain't got to put my name in. Uh, let me just say this. He told on some people before, right? I ain't never told on nobody before. So when people start calling me a snitch, what I say is, Nigga, y'all don't say nothing about that nigga. That nigga, that a bad motherfucker. Reason why y'all don't say nothing about him, because that nigga kick ass and he'll kill one of you nigga. But I'm saying his name. And won't nobody else in the city mention his name. Won't nobody in the city say his name publicly and say he what he is, right? So uh, I did it. So the nigga sent me a letter. He, you know, he wrote me, a, he sent me a message, wrote me a DM on why he did what he did or, you know, what his reason. Hey, man, it's cool. I should have left him alone right then. But, you know, nigga, I like antagonizing them gangster niggas. So, yeah, I kept fucking with him. So, yeah, this is what I know. Most niggas who go catch me slipping ain't ready and prepared to do what they want to do to me. Because they didn't know they were going to see me. You see what I'm saying? So that's my element of defense. Nigga, when you see me, you don't know you was going to see me today. So you wasn't prepared for this. Yeah, I am. I just didn't have my gun on me. 
So yeah, now nah, homie, so uh, I go everywhere by myself. When I travel and go places, I ain't got security. I think one time I I uh I hired security, uh, but some other people paid for it. Uh, that's when I went to a uh uh, uh I hosted uh, a strip club in, in Jacksonville, Florida. But I had a nigga that was nine feet tall, and I ain't want that big old nigga hovering over me. He was a big old tall nigga. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now nah, he had me boxed in. Yeah, nigga, this, I like this. This was before or after the Fulio uh back and forth. This was him. before. Yeah, this was way oh, okay. before. Yeah, yeah. It, so I went to Bottoms Up Strip Club, man. A uh, club owner named Reggie brought me out to Bottoms Up. I uh, had the time of my life. Uh, but now, nah, homie, I, uh, I, I, nigga, catch me, catch me, homie. Uh. If I got a bunch of people with me, in my mind, them the people that'll tell somebody, hey, this is where he gonna be at today. Or he go do, or they go tell their girl, hey man, me and Charleston fit it. So uh I move alone and I move strategically. I mean, you have a family, uh, a beautiful house, um, you're at the top of the world, everybody's talking about you. Why like what do you get? Is that one of your vices to go to the club and look at women? Like, what do you get from that when you could be at home and not have to look over your shoulder? Uh, nigga, I ain't over my, I ain't in a strip club looking over my shoulder. I got a hoe sitting in my lap, uh, talking to some more bitches. I can't see nothing over here, nigga. I'm blind from here all the way here. I ain't got time to be turning around doing this shit, nigga. I just want out looking at them hoes, nigga. Hell you talking about? I don't know who finna get me. Fuck it. Yeah, no, nah, nigga. I got, I, I can only see so much. I ain't got time to be looking back there, nigga. Fuck who coming back there. If it's coming, it's coming. I don't want to know. So I don't look over my shoulder. Yeah, I don't want to know when I'm gonna die. But, but why go to uh, a, 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 an environment you can't control? Uh, uh, Oh, he's scratching uh, his uh, head. Hold on. <laughs> I go, listen, uh, I don't want to give my secret up, but nigga, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I can't, okay. listen, I can control it, right? Uh, the funk ass DJ know me. So every now and then, the fun, if I go on the weekend, when the gangsters in there, the funk ass DJ go say something like this. If you ain't, if you don't fuck with 12, say fuck 12. If you ain't never snitched on no nigga, oh, so I know he know I'm in the club fucking with me. But, when the gangster niggas ain't in there, he don't say nothing. Yeah, 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 he don't say nothing. So yeah, yeah, nah, homie, but uh, nigga, I ain't like no other nigga. I like to have fun, nigga. And if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die having fun. Yeah, nigga ain't gonna catch me coming out the door like Mega Evers, going home to the wife in the, yeah, nigga going home to the bitch every night and they shoot you in the back of the head. Yeah, nigga gonna catch me out uh, with my pants half down with a whore. Yeah, nigga, in that back alley somewhere, getting my dick sucked behind a trash can. Yeah, in an unusual place. But yeah, him ain't gonna be on at the house. Yeah, cause you know, I I speak the rainwater, and it's a few other cats that I know that uh that know you. And they sometimes people fear for your, you know, they fear for your safety. Sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody do, homie. Everybody except me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God look after fool. So, yeah, nigga, be a fool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, God look out the food, nigga. So, yeah. Uh, and then, listen, and I, yeah, yeah, nah, mama, if they want me, they can get me. Just say, let me just say that. If they want me, they can get me. I make it real okay. easy. Some O Block members, uh, they just been indicted on the death of FBG Duck. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was four or five of them. One of them, one of the trigger man allegedly he killed himself. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, the FBI came out on a press conference and they said that it's easy now. You can see it on YouTube, music videos, Instagram. These people put it out and it's easier to catch cases more than ever. Uh, uh, sh shout out to Mama Duck. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, over the last year, I, I bonded with the right. So she called me. Uh, she called me today and, and told me that, you know, the FBI was going to be doing a news conference. Uh, for me to tune in, she sent me, you know, she, she, so, uh, so just to hear her, uh, uh, I've never been on this side of, of, of justice, homie. Uh, I was on the side asking for forgiveness. Uh, nobody close to me have ever been murdered. You know, I haven't lost any family members. I haven't lost any close friends to gun violence or anything. Right. So I don't know this side. Uh, so to hear, uh, the joy and, and the excitement in her voice. 
uh, to know that her son mattered enough for whatever reason uh, that they solved this case. Uh, to answer your question, I remember about five years ago uh, when Facebook uh, began uh, being used for uh, uh, being used as evidence in, in, in court cases, right? And I remember uh, our local law enforcement coming out and saying uh, social media have become one of the number one tools for law enforcement to use to make arrests and fight crime. So uh, them niggas told on themselves. So who needs snitches? Who who why why do they need snitches when the nigga who sell weed flashes money on Instagram? Why do they need snitches uh when niggas don't go commit the crimes, but they'll go rap about it, what their homeboys did, and give clues to it, right? Just by you rapping about it, or let the police know that somebody in your circle has to have done that, or else you wouldn't be rapping about it. So you dropping clues. So just say like the Julio Fulio dude. He just did a whole song talking about murders and dead people. It's obvious, nigga, the FBI knows somebody in that circle. All they got to do is just throw a whale out there. Because by if you rapping about it, so that means it's somebody close to you or in your circle that may have some ties or association to this crime. It's, it's simple mathematics. And, and so, uh, like I said again, homie, we're living in a generation where people are idol worshipers. So you either worship an idol or you die trying to become one at whatever expense. Yeah, you know, OTF is having uh, a really rough year. It's a lot of artists on that label that are getting indicted or, you know, going to jail. Do you think Dirk, because, you know, Dirk is the money guy. He's the superstar. How does how should Dirk play? Should he fall back? Should he just be a one man army? He's made it already. What you know? Uh, I, I once I once identified him as an agent of darkness. I, I that was my exact description. Man, he's an agent of darkness. Uh, he can't fall back, homie. He can't fall back. See, once once you purpose in your heart to hurt somebody, to kill somebody. And it and it happens. And all of y'all get together and y'all stand together after that, right? It's like a blood sacrifice. Y'all wouldn't kill somebody. After we killed somebody, I went one way, they went one way, we all went our separate ways. I came back, nigga, to, to redeem. I came back to redeem, to be redeemed, right? To pay a debt. To the, to the life. I don't owe a debt to society. I pay my debt to society. I owe a debt to the life. So that's how I can sit on a capital murder case and say, hey man, can y'all spread this kid life? Let me explain to y'all. Not that this makes an excuse, but let me explain to y'all the way we can, I can explain to white people where y'all can have some compassion for this black kid, which y'all normally wouldn't have any. So man, you can't kill these people, homie. And you and your people kill these people, and, and nobody comes back to try to make it right, to right or wrong. Nobody. So, uh, how can he fall back at this point? He can do a lot of uh, unfollowing, like he did. He's done a lot of unfollowing people on, on on Instagram and try to distance himself. But he don't know how reckless those guys have been in phone conversations away from him. You, you see what I'm saying? Uh, or uh, they always need Biggies and Tupacs. They always need Biggies and Tupacs. You, well, the, the industry does, right? Uh, we, we, you know, this is drummer field hip hop now. Uh, this ain't about, this, this isn't a generation of lyrical content, nigga. This is drummer field hip hop now, nigga. Uh, a psycho drummer, uh, you know, acting out the lyrics in real life. Uh, so, you know, these is like, uh, this is like gladiators. It's like watching glad gladiators. These are modern day gladiators. 
uh, except they're not in coliseums. They're on stages and in videos. But somebody's going to die behind these. You see what I'm saying? So so that's that's our form of entertainment now. Uh, it's like football. It's like basketball. Uh, this shit is physical contact with rappers now. Uh, so he can't pull back. You know, I see him making posts about getting married, about going back to high school. Uh, nigga, I did the same thing. When the FBI came in, got my partners, I went back to college, community college. That's what led me to law school. A nigga running from them indictments. So uh, I, I understand, but let me just say this. It's never too late to, to, to turn right and go straight. I'm going to say that again, homie. It's never too late to turn right and just go straight. You spoke out on your YouTube and you recently said that uh, hip hop culture is rape culture. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can go back to uh, L.A. and them rapping about uh, pulling up at the high school, talking to the girls. Uh, uh, you can you can talk about uh, you can go back to once one group in particular. No other male has really brought this to attention. But Bell B of DeVoe, they got a song talk about do me baby. How when they was young, underage, nigga, they were fucking all the grown bitches in the industry, in the clubs, underage boys, right? On the flip side of it, uh, hmm. when you go back to uh, uh, NWA, uh, Niggas for Life, there's a segment where they stop and fuck with a prostitute, a little skit, and she would go get in the car with seven niggas. You can go back to uh, Two Live Crew. Hey, we want some pussy. There's a there's a there's a part in there where he say the girls will say stop. I say I'm not. The girl will say that's enough. I quit. Y'all are busting me out. So the the culture, homie, Pimp C. I kick down his door and fucked his main honey, honey. I'm looking at rape. I'm looking at kidnap. Uh uh, uh, what's the other little boy? Uh, uh, the, the little nigga, uh, who bitch run off on him? Renner, the Brenda Renner. What's that nigga name? Uh, uh, the 1017 artist. He used to be, I like the little nigga. Oh, I know who you talking about. Uh, uh, he say, uh, I gave her a perk and I told her to drop her panties and she didn't even understand me. Yeah. You see, Fujiano, yeah. uh, you know, I gave her a perk. She was so fucked up, I told her to drop her pen and she didn't even understand me. Uh, Rick Ross, I gave her Molly, she ain't even know it. Uh, come on, homie, it's, 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 we thinking punching a woman, choking her out, holding that gunpoint and raping her. We don't think coercion. We don't think, say, nigga, let's get over here and get fucked up. That's rape. That's rape. If you, Take out a woman out on a date and you get her intoxicated with the intentions on sleeping with her. That's rape. That's rape. So how many times, nigga, we get them over here and say, nigga, leave the door open. Nigga, leave the door open. Shit, nigga, call over here. So we all trying to. So at a certain point, that was cultural, homie. That was cultural. Nigga, the, the Snoop Dogg chronic era, nigga, all them niggas. Running trains. That's how shit like Tupac situation, like Tupac situation, like Kobe Bryant happened. Because in our culture, that's what we do. Nigga, one, all of us go try to fuck one woman. She like one of us. But they go put the pressure on us. Oh, nigga, you simping. You simping. Oh, nigga. Oh. So at least let her, at least let us try it, nigga, and see if she'll do it. So, right. uh, so nah, but I just don't paint the whole picture. But nigga, yeah, that's the culture. It's a cycle of violence and a cycle of rape. That's why when you look at athletes from, from, from college to, to, to the army, to, to hip hop, R&B, it's a cycle of rape, homie, that's hidden and swept under the rug. It's the elephant in most rooms. Henry Ruggs, uh, the wide receiver that just got drafted, um, nigga just had that Rick. Yeah, he was drafted uh, number twelve overall this summer, and um, it looks like his career is over. You know, he spent his whole life trying to get in the NFL, and um, he was going one hundred fifty six miles an hour. It ain't over. Say it ain't over, my nigga. But you got to go through what you got to go through based on your choices and your decisions. You can't. <coughs> you got to go through what you got to go through 
based on your choices and your decisions. That's how that go in life. But you get a chance to redeem. You might not get to play football again. But nigga, you can take this story and turn it into a triumph. You can turn this tragedy into a triumphant story. I know motherfucker made two, three hundred thousand dollars in speaking engagement fees. So when this is all said and done, he gonna have a hell of a story to tell. And, and, and depending on how he can package it and present it based on what he go through, he gonna have a hell of a story to tell. But on the flip side, somebody lost their life too. Uh, and, he killed, and he killed the dog too. Uh, that's the tragedy. Yeah, fuck the dog. Yeah, and I hate to say that on your platform, fuck the dog. Uh, yeah, yeah, fuck that dog, nigga. Yeah, and anybody feel sorry for a dead dog. Yeah, nigga. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the tragedy. Uh, many people lose lives in wars. And we support wars. Uh, he didn't, he didn't set out to kill nobody. Uh, he a 22, 23 year old kid, uh, they got intoxicated. They come from poverty. They got all this wealth and all this success and it ain't no blueprint to it. Uh, you don't know what demons he got to make him drink like that and drive at such a high rate of speed, right? Uh, it don't excuse what he did, but there's a why. How, how did this happen? Why, right? So uh, at this point, that's what we look for. Uh, it, all victims want to know why. Why didn't you? Why did you? So a 22, 23-year-old kid, homie, with an undeveloped brain, with an undeveloped brain that made a horrible decision that cost somebody their life. Should he pay for it? Yes. Should he be punished for the rest of his life? No. No. Now, Kyrie Irving, um, he's not playing so far in the NBA. Um, and he's missing out on well over, I'm going to say like 80 to 100 million because he haven't took, you know, the shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Kyrie Irving to death. And when I had my first Instagram page, uh, he, he was one of my followers. Uh, he used to follow me. Uh, I'm going to say, say to Kyrie Irving, uh, say, nigga, uh, take the vaccine. Yeah, yeah, take the vaccine, my nigga. Uh, I know niggas, uh, I know niggas who fuck with no rubbers. <laughs> I'm sure you have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure Kyrie have too. Yeah, man. So yeah, nigga, take the vaccine. Mama took it. Yeah, mama took it and, and, and mama seemed to be doing fine. Uh my brother in prison, he took it. Uh he seemed to be doing fine. And and start next week, uh, you know, I'm gonna start pushing or uh, take the vaccine just to make people mad. Have you have you um have you took it? No, hell no, I ain't taking that shit. But I'm gonna be pushing it. Yeah, I won't be pushing it like a motherfucker. 2022 is coming up. Um, you know, I've seen you in Baltimore moving around. Um, different movies I think you were doing. or Million Dollar Thing. Yeah, yeah. Million okay. Dollar Thing was the name of that So, movie. So 2022, you're going to you're gonna take it a step further. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually, uh, I'm actually in talks with the same movie producer and script writer who wrote the movie uh, for Mo3. I forgot the name of the movie, but two weeks prior to Mo3's death, they was getting ready to sign and get this movie deal done, right? And the script was wrote specifically for Mo3. He was gonna play this, this character named Malik. Uh, he was gonna play this character named Malik who, who met, who was, who met this, this girl in high school or something, and she was a Colombian's drug lord daughter, but he didn't know till they grew up, right? So once Mo died, uh, you know, they kind of, it kind of, you know, went, went another way. And so then I went to this movie premiere, uh, last week, uh, in Dallas. And so I met the movie producer, uh, some people put us together, have been telling him about me. And so, uh, he and I met the other day. And so he has this new movie script and he wanted it for, for, for number seven and, and Dun Dun. But 
the idea that 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 Netflix or Hulu Hulu or whatever they wanted it's a great script, great storyline, but they wanted big name actors and out of the Dallas Fort Worth area, Sean Cotton, Charleston White, uh Yellow Beezy, Trap Boy, Dun Dun, uh Mr. Hit That, uh Anthony Dewberry. So all these big names in Dallas put all these people in the film kind of like a uh, uh, I got to hook up too, right? Yeah. So that's what they're trying to do now. So I just met with this producer, homie. So uh, that's that's where I met. So I'm getting pushed into the movie films, right? But my 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 greatest accomplishment for for this year, my nigga, and going into 22 was put my nigga on. Uh, I took my nigga Anthony Dewberry, homie, uh, who was on my co-host on the podcast, who don't know nothing about YouTube. Don't know you speak, nothing. You speak on his name a lot. Yeah, who don't know nothing. We grew up together, homie. We met when we was kids. Uh, I I put him on a platform where within weeks it was monetized because he was so I, I was able to use my platform. So to see the power uh, of that and to reach back and grab one of my niggas from childhood, homie, and, and to see him prospering and, 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 and flourishing in, in this world. So that's that's my biggest accomplishment. Man, that's real, man. I'm excited to see uh what you do next? Uh, what's the what's the name of your website again? So the people can know. Oh to go here man, and shit, nigga, therealcharlestonwhite dot com. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, stay tuned. You know we got the new podcast, game related, not gang related, coming. So we got a new studio coming, man. A uh, new editor, new production team, uh, and all of that, man. And so I'm over here at Prophecy Studios. And so, man, my first next video that's coming out gonna be shot right here at Prophecy Studios, man. So I, after seeing what I see. Uh, nah, homie, everybody needs to be over here. For real. I see why yeah, you got the real me here. Deal. I see why you got me here, nigga. Everybody need to be here. <laughs> yeah, shout out to uh Victoria for real. She 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 got the plug. She the one that uh got us there. Already. Yeah. 